We are Sorted, a group of mates who have your back when it comes to all things food. From cooking battles to gadget reviews Man, it's not worth it. and cookbook challenges to a midweek meal packs app. Crack your eggs, bake. We uncover the tools that'll help us all cook and eat smarter. Join our community where everything we do starts with you. Hello, I'm Barry and this is Michael. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we put 20 different cuisines into a bowl. And we each took in turns to select two cuisines from that bowl. And they became our the ultimate, ultimate normals, normals fusion battle, battle dishes. dishes. Cheers. What's the opposite of confident? Unconfident. Unconfident. Anxious. Really anxious right now. Gentlemen, synchronised watches. We have three hours, starting in three, two, one. Good luck, good luck, but not much luck, but not much much. Get shut up. So, the two cuisines that I drew out of the hat were British and Moroccan. So the dish I've chosen to make is a roast dinner that looks like a roast dinner, but has the flavours of Morocco. Component one, the protein. I'm going for roast beef, but I'm rubbing it in Ras Al Hanout, which is a North African spice blend. Once I've covered my blade of beef in the Ras Al Hanout, seasoned with salt and pepper on all sides, I'm then lowering it into a pan and searing it on each side for two to three minutes, so it's really deep, dark brown. Whipping it out, putting it on a plate, and then chucking in a whole load of onions and garlic. For my two cuisines, I got Greek and South African. The one thing that jumped out to me about South Africa was bunny chows are amazing. It won Jamie a battle once. So I thought, you know what, let's work off the back of that. Create a bunny chow, but inside of it, I'm gonna create a beef stufado and of course some spicy paprika chips to go alongside. And I'm pretty certain this time for once in my life, I'm going to win this battle. Oh, that's so bold. I know. You idiot. Now, my battle actually started about three hours ago. I made my own dough, flour, <laughs> water, yeast, sugar, olive oil, and some olives into a dough, let it prove, put it into a baking tray, grease, covered, leave it for half an hour. What were your two cuisines? Italian and what? No, Greek and South African. But I've so, got a focaccia in there. So, so when so you're given two countries to yep. take inspiration for bread from... Yeah. I chose, I chose to go a bunny chow. Yep. Which was, and then I was like, okay, how do I make the bunny chow have a Greek influence? So I basically laced it with olives, right. and I used gotcha. a, there is a Greek type of bread that is like a focaccia. So why don't you call it that? Not I don't know what it's called. Well, but it's, focac it's focaccia-like. For my two cuisines, I picked out Creole and Japanese. I've decided to bring together some of my favorite foods. It's classic, but everyone loves it. It's chicken katsu, and then gonna match that with the most amazing Creole sauce that's just gonna add some warmth and bring it all together in the most delicious way. I'm gonna start by making some amazing pickles. These are actually inspired by pickles that we made whilst we're in Tokyo feeding people. It was delicious. Let's see if I can recreate it. Another important part of my dish is the marinade for my beef ribs, which is, which is the first component of my stafado. It's allspice berries, cloves, oregano, red wine, red wine vinegar, and of course my short ribs. The key here is to leave this marinating overnight. I don't have overnight, so therefore I'm gonna be searing off my beef rib now and then chucking the rest of my marinade into my sauce later. Golden brown, perfect. Huh? Do you know the difference between golden brown and grey? Shut up! Oh. I'm just helping. I'm just, I'm just helping. Spaff, you're, yeah. you're the, you're the beef guy. I'm the beef guy. You're yeah. the beef guy. Golden brown. Ooh. Oh, get, get over here. Suddenly there were two players in the game. Shut up! Oh, golden grey. <laughs> there is so much chopping. My Creole sauce starts with the holy trinity. It's onion, it's celery, it's bell pepper, and there's garlic there as well. Peel and dice, all of them. Oh, We've had 45 minutes already. Are you having a laugh? No. It's been 47 and a half years. I've finally finished chopping every vegetable in London. I'm now going to fry them in some olive oil. Once my holy trinity has sweated off for about 10 minutes, I'm gonna add in my garlic, some bay leaves, a little bit of thyme, and a little bit more cayenne than I should. 
Component number two, Yorkshire puddings flavoured with cumin seeds. Standard Yorkshire pudding batter, eggs, milk, whisk together, adding flour bit by bit, then adding thyme and cumin seeds, covering it, sticking it in the fridge, because I'll come back to that in about an hour. So now I've seared my beef on all sides. I've then got my pearl onions, which are integral to a stuffado, frying off with some tomato puree. Now, everything that I've prepared goes into the pan with my beef. I'm gonna put my beef stock and my beef to go into the oven as long as possible. And then my loaf is also going in the oven, but this is gonna have half an hour. With everything now having sweated down and smelling, Amazing. It's time to add in some tomatoes, chicken stock, and some Louisiana hot sauce, or if not, New York hot sauce. <laughs> saffron roast potatoes. Cold water with saffron, chopped up potatoes, all the similar size, going into the cold water, then being brought up to a boil. Test them, see if they're cooked. Poke it with a knife, see if they slip off. Once they are cooked, into a colander, where I zhuzh them, fluff them, throw them into some polenta, and then they get roasted. So yeah, I'm gonna bash my chicken, uh, flatten it out, and then I can pané it, um, which I know is a French technique, but let's make it Japanese today. Stuck. I think that's worked though, mate. Well, I just Nothing don't trust it. Does it look clean? It looks clean. Whoa! Yeah, it's clean. Now my oil's at 1.30. I'm going in with my chips, cooking to go light golden, then removing, draining, then back in at 1.80 to go really crispy and soft in the middle. No, please. I need all these chips. Another wonderful thing about this excellent kitchen is um, how spacious it is and the endless supply of hobs. Mate, it brings us closer, right? Stop whining. I need space. So tahini, another Moroccan flavour. I'm going to paint them, get loads of delicious tahini all over it and then just roast them off. Time to finally get started on my rice. I have a very exact amount of sushi rice. I also have a very exact amount of water. I'm going to drain my sushi rice in a minute of cold running water, and then that's gonna help get rid of all the gloopiness uh, when it cooks. Then I'm gonna put it into the very precise amount of water, along with some cider vinegar, some sugar, a pinch of salt, bring that up to a simmer, then put a lid on it, turn the heat down to its lowest setting, and leave it to absorb all of that liquid and get all yummy. Oh, God. <laughs> you okay? There's no lids. Right, now cover my chips in some smoked paprika, some fresh oregano. They are quite... Stop sick. eating my pies! Oh, really? No, please don't. That's, I need all of them. Yorkshire puddings are in. In that 25 minutes, let's make a horseradish hummus. Usually we'd create some sort of drama in the big countdown, but Mike has flapped and fleed this kitchen in order to finish his bowl so we can go home tonight. He's not very happy. Oh, this is bullshit. I think things have taken a turn for the worst. You know what, mate? Yeah. How's it going? There's only so much you can do. Are you making hummus? Yep. I'm desperate for the win. The yeah, veg that I've had a night with that I couldn't even <laughs> char. I've brushed in tahini, not harissa. Sorry, you did what? I brushed my veg in tahini. So who loves peanut butter courgettes? Lovely. Exactly, Lovely. good. Harissa would have been better, but we're with tahini now. Tahini. Like, this is where we're at. Boys, I don't want to rush you, but we've got five minutes left. Stop eating my chips! One minute left.
three, two, one. Step away from your plate. That was stressful. These are the most unusual plates ever, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> is that? <laughs> <laughs> Who else is physically and emotionally drained after Exhausted. that battle? 100%. <laughs> this looks epic. Can we start in the middle? Yeah, that's me. Uh, My fusion between South African and Greek cuisine. I love the rich beef and the onions, but also the yogurt and the fresh herb kinds of bring it to life. A little bit of kick, but for me, one of the best bits is the fact that the bunny chow isn't the shape I would associate. You've taken two things, fused them together, and mixed it up. I agree, the, the bread is excellent as a plate. The yogurt on top is great. The flavors are all great. I'd say the beef could have done with a little bit longer. Mm-hmm, agreed. But that is, that is probably the only comment I have. Good work, mate. Mm. This that has another platter more. feast to share. This is a British roast dinner that tastes like Morocco. Mate, this is a proper roast dinner. But not. Mm. It's everything I want it to be and something else. Yeah. Every mouthful has a little twist that takes you on a journey that, if you shut your eyes, does feel Moroccan. The beef is good. All right, three for three. I went for a Creole chicken katsu. That Creole sauce has got a nice warmth and kick to it, as you'd expect, but I feel like you've got the right level. You haven't mm. gone like Jamie Spice and balanced out with the pickle and the rice and some very good golden breadcrumbed Katsu chicken. I like that. Oh, I have to say, mm. Spa is king of pickles. Mm. I love Whether it's pickle. a comeback sauce or pickled anything, you are bloody excellent at pickling stuff. You should go chat. I guess so. Weirdly enough, I'd be happy for either of you guys to win because I think both of your dishes were great. It's the coming last bit that's the not nice <laughs> bit. <laughs> <laughs> like, not winning is okay but being the worst in the kitchen yeah in third place jamie's dish <sighs> yes <laughs> that's fair Sorry. no i can i can i can live with that <laughs> well, you, you were just saying you can't well, no no i know <laughs> no disrespect to you jay but in first place it was in incredibly close and i'm sure the person who comes into second place will be gutted because it was so close in first place it's mike Mike. It's very really annoying, but I always have a great It was really deceptive. Yeah. It's one you yeah. look at and go, that is classic yeah. Sunday roast, and yet it still has all the flavour fusion. Yeah. Mm. Scraped it, really did. But well done, everyone. Well done, you, mate. Well done, that was great. Well Good well job all round. The big question is, what do you guys think? Comment down below, let us know who would your winner be. And more importantly, last place. <laughs> and more importantly, last place. Absolutely fine. We hope you liked our fusion dishes. Now keep watching the channel because in a few weeks we'll be releasing our chef's fusion battle. And if you'd like to have our... Oh, we held hands for a bit there. Yeah? If you'd like our personal recipes, then comment down below and we'll release them on the website so you can try them at home. Much better. Do a dad joke for me. Oh! I am so ready to laugh. Saw a chicken staring at a lettuce and a tomato. Chicken Caesar salad. That's... Yeah! <laughs> Come on! Get in there! That was funny! We've also built the Sorted Club, where you can get tons of foodie inspo using the PAX Midweek Meal app, discover and share restaurant recommendations using the Eat app, listen and contribute to our Feast Your Ears podcast, and send us ideas for new cookbooks you'll receive throughout the year. Check it all out by heading to sorted.club. And now a blooper.